Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Please stand with me as you are able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Creator, you made all people of every land. It is our responsibility to give thanks and respect to those who first occupied this land we are upon. This is the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. We are thankful for the gifts of the people of the land. We offer our respect to those ancestors who may be interred in this land. Creator, let us be of good mind to reconcile the mistreatment of this land and to those who have been displaced. With thankful and respectful hearts, we pray in your name, your Son, the Peacemaker, and the Sacred Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Grant the thoughts of our heart for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, your Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving love. Renew your people with your heavenly grace. In all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of God's word. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, 
You do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus, is it, thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last man, Adam, became a living, life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that was first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the first man of dust, so are those who are of dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do not spread yourselves because of evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Take the light in the Lord, and he shall shake you in your hearts. Commit your way to the Lord. And put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will, he will make your right seasons fear of life, and your just dealing in the season. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret yourself over the one who causes us, the one who succeeds in evil deeds. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone. Do not fret yourself. It leads only to evil. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while, the wicked shall be no more. You shall search out their place, but they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in the abundance of peace. But the deliverance of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord, the Lord will help them and rescue them. He will rescue them from wicked and deliver them, because they seek refuge in him. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And for, from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, 
Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The last weekend, I was driving in London, and a large convoy of trucks with Canadian flags was driving down Wellington Road, and they were honking their horns. The destination was, of course, Victoria Hospital and Parkwood Institute, but the police had blocked off the entrances to the hospital as well as the turnoff onto Commissioner's Road. I have to admit, when I saw the protesters, my heart rate quickened, my blood pressure elevated, and I felt myself getting angry. I had heard so many stories on the news about these protesters using racially charged terms, honking hordes at all hours of the night, claiming their freedom had been stolen, Meanwhile, they've been camping out in front of parliament buildings, some soaking in a hot tub and eating barbecued pork. I was angry with all of them. I was about to extend a one-fingered salute to these protesters while driving by, but then I realized I was wearing my collar. <laughs> and not only that, my license plate says Reverend Matt. So I stopped myself. What was it, though, about the caller and the public proclamation that I was a follower of Christ that made me stop from giving the convoy some rude sign language? Well, that's something I thought about on my way home. And then I read this morning's gospel, and it hit me all over again as if for the first time. That what we are called to be can feel next to impossible. Jesus says, but I say to you, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. He says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For sinners, love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? So Jesus is giving each of us a goal, and yes, that goal might seem unattainable at first. But I do not believe that Jesus is asking us to be perfect. Rather, Jesus is once again challenging us by laying before us what it means to be fully human. Yes, it isn't something that we can snap our fingers at and accomplish, but it is something that God wants us to, at the very least, strive for, to be persistent in. We are to persist in the goal Jesus has for us. Well, what exactly is the goal? Well, our Lord is pretty clear about some of what he wants us to strive for this morning, and as usual, we learn in a hurry that the way of the kingdom of heaven is a lot different than the ways of the world and the way the world likes us to carry on. Jesus says, rather than an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, do not resist the evildoer. As a matter of fact, if someone strikes you on the right cheek, give them the other also. If anyone wants to take your coat, give them your shirt as well. Give to everyone who is begging. Love your enemies. Pray for those who treat you poorly. Be persistent. Essentially, Jesus wants us to be the best human beings we can be. He wants us to strive for radical kindness, 
extreme love, to open our hearts to people, strangers, friends, families, bosses, co-workers, spouses and children, and even those who we are so radically opposed to that we can barely hold back from flipping them off. All in an effort to spread the love of God, to allow others to feel love. The kingdom of heaven has everything to do with sharing God's love, with giving of ourselves so that the love of God spreads. And that means listening to the other, caring for the other, praying for the other, because let's face it, sometimes we aren't right. Sometimes we need to take a good hard look in the mirror and ask, is it possible just this one time that I could be wrong? Well, I have to do better at listening to the other side of the story and not be so quick to shut down when I see a protester on Parliament Hill. Now, don't get me wrong. We have to stand against hate. But I do not believe for one minute that every protester on Parliament Hill is filled with hate or malice or are racist or homophobic. There are those who need to be heard, who feel discouraged or perhaps have not felt supported for many years. What is the backstory behind the anger? What has led someone to become who they are when they finally cross our path? Who knows? I don't, because I have shut them down. I have blanketed them all as being troublemakers. But what would it look like if we could somehow actually take the time to converse and spread the love as Jesus asks? Now, I know that this may sound idealistic, and for the most part, it is. But hear me out. What if in this world that is full of heightened hate and frustration, right now, what if we took the time to show love, we listened to others, and wanted to truly hear their stories? Science tells us we are more likely to perform a thoughtful deed when someone does one for us. Take, for instance, the stranger who smiles at you in the elevator. I mean, this is prior to masks. <laughs> Almost always, we will return the smile. And you'll be more prone to smile at the next person, and there's a ripple effect. I'll never forget that one day, when I was having a particularly stressful time, I thought I would have myself a coffee, so I pulled up to the local coffee shop drive through and I placed my order. And as I drove up to the window to pay, the employee told me that the person in front of me paid for my order and told me to have a nice day. Well, that act of kindness turned my day around. The sun felt a little brighter, people seemed a little kinder, life felt a little better, all because of someone taking a moment to do a kind deed for me, and it was a complete stranger. Every now and again, because of what happened to me, I will do the same thing for a stranger. And when I do, it does something for me. It makes me feel good about myself and the world around me. The late Stuart McLean once said, we do this thing, we open our hearts to the world around us. And the more we do that, the more we allow ourselves to love, the more we are bound to find ourselves one day. How do we open our hearts to the world around us? We open them by listening, conversing, trying to understand, and finally by shining light into the dark corners. I think that's what Christ is preaching. Opening ourselves up to the world around us, recognizing that everyone needs love, and that when we give love, 
our souls feel love in return. So Christ encourages us to be persistent, be persistent in sharing our love with all people, because that is how the kingdom of heaven can be realized. I recently read a story and it reminded me that spreading the good news need not be complicated. Sometimes all it takes is a little persistence and a simple good morning. I've been taking a bus to school for years. Most passengers keep to themselves and no one ever talks to anyone else. About a year ago, an elderly man got on the bus and said loudly to the driver, good morning. Well, most people looked up annoyed and the bus driver just grunted. The next day, the man got on at the same stop and again said loudly, good morning to the driver and another grunt. By the fifth day, the driver relented and greeted the man with a semi-cheerful, good morning. The man announced, my name is Benny, and asked the driver, what's yours? The driver said his name was Ralph. That was the first time any of us heard the driver's name, and soon people began to talk to each other and say hello to Ralph and to Benny. Soon Benny extended a cheerful good morning to the whole bus. Within a few days, his good morning was returned by a whole bunch of good mornings, and the entire bus seemed to be friendly. People got to know each other. If a leader is someone who makes something happen, Benny was our leader in friendliness. A month ago, Benny didn't get on the bus, and we haven't seen him since. Everyone began to ask about Benny, and lots of people said he may have died. No one knew what to do, and the bus got awful quiet again. So last week, I started to act like Benny and say good morning to everyone, and well, they cheered up again. I guess I'm the leader now. I hope Benny comes back to see what he started. So this week, this week, let's all take a moment and forgive someone. Buy a stranger a coffee. Pray for someone you don't like. Say good morning, I can really mean it. Because when we open our hearts to the world around us and allow ourselves to love, the more we are bound to find ourselves one day. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, my Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Lord. He will come again to judge the living. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. In peace, 
and humility. Let us pray. Say, Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we thank you for being our hope and our redeemer. We pray for the people of God throughout the world and ask for your grace. Help us to be more open to your Holy Spirit and to experience the unfolding of your kingdom in the here and now. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all bishops and ministers, especially for our bishop Todd Townsend, our rector, rector Matt Martin, and our honorary assistant. Reverend Canon Dr. Doug Layton and Reverend Ann Jedren. We pray for their good health and an ever growing awareness of your peace. May you also bless our entire worshiping community as we continue to participate in a shared ministry here at Luke's Place. Lord, hear our prayer. Together, let us pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, that she recovers well from COVID, and for the leaders of the nations. May those with power and authority over others be guided by compassion and justice. We pray for Justin Trudeau, our elected Prime Minister, and for all those who work together to govern Canada. Lord, please give them the discernment and the means to serve our nation in a manner that is in accordance with your will. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for peace in the world and uphold the work of peacekeepers especially right now in South Sudan, the Congo, the Central African Republic, and now we continue to pray for the people of the Ukraine and their children as they face the imminent prospect of war. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray too for our own nation, which has found itself in a state of turmoil, even as we continue to deal with a prolonged pandemic. Let us be thankful in the midst of this strife for today's gospel, which as our rector has pointed out, presents us with a challenge and can be used as a framework for responding to others as Christians. Lord, hear our prayer. Help us, we pray, to become more aware of the effects of our anger and the impact it has on others and ourselves for that matter. We have learned that feelings of anger can inspire us to seek justice and that we are actually called to act wisely towards this end. Even so, Lord, we sometimes need your help to let go of our anger before it turns into rage and is no longer constructive. Please help us not to be overcome with anger, but instead with love for one another. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have passed on from this life and for those who are grieving. We ask that your presence and your healing be known to them. We pray for the whole of humanity that one day we may live together in peace and celebrate your divine love. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen.
Dear friend we pray, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins with confidence in God's forgiveness. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sin, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand with me as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I invite you to greet one another with a sign of peace. By his 
his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of all our and of our
Gracious God, in the Eucharist we celebrate your love for us and for all people. Grant us strength by these holy gifts, we may show your love in our lives and know its fulfillment in your presence. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The glory to God, whose power is in us, who can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Then the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. If we just have time for a couple of announcements, um, I would like to, uh, first of all,